Everyone is aware of how tempting it might be to obtain something you really want. So, we have a similar story today, where the drive to get something almost put lives at stake. The pharaoh of Egypt, Ramses the Great, had a son named Setna, who was an accomplished magician and scholar of all classical literature. When Setna was left alone to study, he was the happiest, but something tempted him to put it all at stake, including his life. What was it? We'll find out in this video. But before we begin, make sure you check out our bio and description to support our channel. Now, let's get started. Setna was a scribe who was proficient in transcribing the many hundreds of signs that made up the ancient Egyptian language. He was also a magician that no one could match because he acquired his craft from the most ancient writings, which even the priests of Amun-Ra, Ptah, and Thoth could not understand. One day, he came across the story of another pharaoh's son, Nefertiti. He had been a great scribe and wise magician several hundred years earlier when Setna was poring over the ancient books written on the two sides of long rolls of papyrus. Nefertiti had read the Book of Thoth, through which a man could enchant both heaven and earth and know the language of the birds and beasts. When Setna discovered that the Book of Thoth had been buried beside Nefertiti in his royal tomb in Memphis, he became obsessed with finding it and learning all of Thoth's knowledge. So he and his brother, and Heru traveled to Memphis, where they were easily able to find Nefertiti's tomb. The body of the prince was wrapped in its linen sheet in the center chamber of the tomb. The Book of Thoth was located on the dead breast of Nefertiti, between two ghostly forms of a young girl and a boy known as Kas, who was sitting alongside it on the stone tomb. Setna bowed reverently to the two Kas and offered his prayer before he gave his introduction and the reason why he was there. After hearing him, the call of the woman, Do not take the Book of Thoth, Setna, son of today's pharaoh. It will bring you trouble, even as it brought trouble upon Nefertiti, who lies here, and upon me, Ahura, his wife, whose body lies on Koptos, on the edge of eastern Thebes, together with that of Merab, our son, whose cause you see before you, dwelling with the husband and father whom we love so dearly. She then began telling him their story in an effort to convince him not to take the book. She told how she was married to Nefertiti and had a son named Merim. She continued how Nefertiti cared for the wisdom of the ancients and for the magic to be learned from all carved on the temple walls more than anything. One day, a priest mocked him and said, All that you read there is but worthless. I could tell you where lies the Book of Thoth, which the God of Wisdom wrote with his own hand. He pestered him to reveal the book's whereabouts in exchange for whatever he wanted. The deal went through, and they were successful in finding the book's location, which was hidden beneath the Nile at Koptos. The Book of Thoth was contained in the golden box. Twisted snakes and scorpions were everywhere around the cage, which was being guarded by an indestructible snake. Yet, the knowledge-greedy fellow decided to go in pursuit of the book. The priests and priestesses of Isis welcomed them and led them to the temple of Isis and Horus. Neferkepta did all the required formalities on the morning of the fifth day. Neferkepta went to the river alone and made a great enchantment. Neferkepta was aware that the snake could not be killed, but rather had to be controlled by cleverness. So he struck off its head, and before its head and body could connect, he placed sand on each piece so the parts couldn't rejoin. As a result, the snake was unable to die and remained there, helpless, in two pieces. When he opened the golden box, he found the Book of Thoth in it. He opened the book and read the first page. And at once he had power over the heavens and the earth, the abyss, the mountains and the sea. He knew what the birds and the beasts and the fishes were saying. He read the next page of spells, saw the sun shining in the sky the moon and the stars, and knew their secrets, and also saw the gods hidden from mortal sight. Soon, Neferkepta, along with his family, started his journey to go back home. But as soon as they moved, a sudden power seemed to seize his little boy Merib, and he was drawn into the river and sank out of sight. Seizing the Book of Thoth, Neferkepta read the necessary spell from it, and at once the body of Merib rose to the surface of the river. But not all the magic in the book could bring Merib back to life. Nonetheless, Neferkepta was able to make his Ka speak to him and tell him what had caused his death. And the Ka of Merib said, Thoth the Great found that his book had been taken, and he hastened it before Amun-Ra. And Ra replied to him, 
deal with Nefertepta and all that is his as it seems good to you. I send out my power to work sorrow and bring a punishment upon him and upon his wife and child. And that power from Ra, passing through the will of Thoth, drew me into the river and drowned me. After the burial of their son, they once again started sailing to go back home. But the same thing happened with Neferkepta's wife, Ahura as well. After burying his wife, Neferkepta once again left for his home. But when the royal boat arrived and Pharaoh stepped aboard, he discovered Neferkepta dead in the cabin with the Book of Thoth bound upon his breast. Neferkepta was buried in this tomb where the Ka of his wife and son come to watch over him. Setna was overwhelmed with amazement after hearing the Ka of Ahura's entire story. But nevertheless, the desire to have the Book of Thoth was so strong upon him that he said, Give me that lies upon the dead breast of Neferkepta, or I will take it by force. He fought with the Ka of Neferkepta and won the book by trick. But when Setna stood before his father and told him all that had happened, Ramses advised him to take the book back to the tomb of Neferkepta like a wise and prudent man, otherwise he will bring sorrow and evil upon himself. But Setna paid no heed to his advice. Instead, he went back to his dwelling and spent all of his time reading the Book of Thoth and learning all of its spells. He frequently read from it to individuals who sought his advice while within the Temple of Ptah. However, he soon started hallucinating about his wife and kids passing away and got terrified. His father again advised him to return the Book of Thoth to Neferkepta, and this time Setna agreed with him. When Setna arrived at the tomb, he cast the magic to reopen it. He then went into the burial chamber where he discovered Neferkepta laying in his coffin with the cause of Ahura and Merib seated on either side. Setna was humiliated by the Ka of Neferkepta, who ordered him to take Ahura and Merib's remains and bury them next to his body in order to prevent him from making Setna's hallucinations come true. Setna searched for their bodies but couldn't find them. A local soon approached him and instructed him to demolish a house and search beneath it for the dead. He followed the instructions and he did discover the bodies. He brought the bodies with so much care and used a charm to close the wall behind him after the funeral procession had left the tomb, covering up any signs of a door. The tomb's entrance was concealed by a low stone shrine, so at Pharaoh's command they piled sand over it. Soon, a sandstorm transformed the low stone shrine into a large mound, which was then leveled, erasing all traces of the tomb's location. And since then, the Book of Thoth was only cautiously mentioned, given the tragic fate that comes with it. We can almost guarantee that you are now covered with goosebumps. Tell us in the comment box below what you would have done if you had been Setna after hearing the story. Would you still have gotten the book, or would you have walked away without it? Also, if you enjoyed this story, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay mythical.